the, the information to the uh, amplifiers, to, to, to the public address. Uh, then an interplan, and <coughs> then finally here in 1990, the European company, and this is the company that I work for, NCR, and later called Geo Systems. And during the time you could see the data here, and then here he managed to make two megabit per second with the D5. Um, how did that come? In the first time, let me see if I have a slide. It's a large country, but we need to have a larger market. So we went to the CBT to ask to get those rules also in, in Europe. And I got access because I was the chairman of this group. And they, in fact, invited me to participate in a group that was already looking at uh, adopting those rules. And they were successful in uh, doing that. So in 1991, uh, they enabled uh, the use of the 2.4 gigahertz band in Europe. And it did a little bit different in the regulation. They say you may use it on a non interference, non protected basis, just like in the United States, for a wideband data transmission system using spread spectrum technology with a minimum aggregate bit rate of 250 bits per second. Then they said, the total power may only be 100 milliwatts. That was the max 
maximum we could use in Europe. And for systems using direct sequence transpector, the peak ERP uh, shall not exceed um, 20 dB, minus 20 dB, no? yeah, the minus, uh, sorry. Uh, the minus is there. So that comes down to 100 dB. And no, no, no. 10, 10 dB per megahertz. So <coughs> instead of saying you have to have this processing gain of 10 times, it's just said the, the density may not be larger than 10 dB. And uh, the 100 dB is then the maximum that you can use uh, uh, over your whole signal. And for uh, frequency hopping, they said the ERP shall not exceed 100 millivolt measured in a 100 kilo hash bandwidth. So, here we have the FCC already having the regulation 1991 to see the decoms and permits the 2.4 gigahertz band. Now, they were not stopping there. The regulator said, well, sooner or later, you will come back for more spectrum. So why don't we just go ahead and see where we have more spectrum for you? So that they went through the spectrum, and the first spectrum they found was at 5 gigahertz and 150 megahertz. And that they put down. So there was spectrum available in Europe for um, in the five year event for hyperland devices and different from the United States where they say industry you find out what you are doing and you have the, the habit is to say okay and Etsy has to make an interconnection standard an interoperability standard that you have to adhere to the standards for hyperland so here that's just said uh, Will build be for Hyperland, and here you have a new um, ruling that said Etsy so far has now standard Hyperland type one, and if you want to use this standard, uh, this, this spectrum, you have to use that, uh, that standard. Now, um, we went ahead. here in 97, 2.4 gigahertz band, 2 megabits per second maximum. And what you see is, first, the 950 megahertz band is used, and later, because of the higher cost at that time, they start to work on the 2.4 gigahertz band. And you see here, close to the approval, <coughs> that it takes up. And because of the standard, that's why my expectation, the number of approval uh, goes up. Now, two megabits per second, um, our salespeople in the field heard people say, ah, it's not enough. Internet is working on 10 megabits per second, and they are even having 100 megabits per second shortly. You're not buying your stuff. So, the first level of priority was making a higher data. So we started to get two projects for higher data rates, and that went with one proposal in the 2.4 gigahertz band that said, okay, the processing gain we interpret as coding gain because of the uh, uh, spreading code, plus Processing, um, the, the processing gain by using it. And um, in fact, they only sent eight chips up rather than the 11 bits, uh, the 11 chips that would keep it within the uh, original 10 times uh, processing gain. And 
Um, there came this proposal for, uh, well, that's maybe this for a second. Nobody released it, so we have to verify that the company that proposed it had gone to the FCC and lawyers were sitting against this other and uh, convinced the FCC that their uh, proposal was within the rules. Now, the rules were changed saying, okay, you can use the uh, uh, protocol of modulation, but you have to prove that the whole game is at least 10. Now, there was a group that was interested in giving uh, telephony in the at home. home <coughs> And they had chosen for frequency hopping. And they had chosen to go their own way because they were not happy with the isochronous uh, method for that uh, IEEE 8 to the left one that they selected. So they, they made their own working group and started to work. And then all of a sudden they heard about this 11 megabits per second possibility. And with one megahertz channel width, it's just not possible to go beyond two megabits per second. So they went to the FCC and said, um, look, you interpret direct sequence that way. Uh, please make another interpretation that we can go to five megahertz channels. Now, of course, the other can said the FCC, wait a minute, you cannot do that. You have to go through a proceeding. And that's what the FCC did. And, um, it went on and on and on. Notice of uh, inquiry and uh, NPRM and report and other. Um, by that time, uh, the, this is the time that Comer had found the letter. Um, the FCC uh, sent this report and order um, saying that the band could be wider. So it permits to use hopping channels wider than 1 megahertz to use minimal 50 non-overlapping compared to 75 channels with a frequency span of at least 75 megahertz. So if you have 50 knobs, then you can have 5 megahertz channels. Now, That was too late for Homer. Because by that time that they had the product, 8 to the 11 had managed to uh, get their 11 megabits per second devices on the market. Um, our company, by that time called Lucent Technologies, had uh, teamed with Apple for making the Apple Airport. And by having the huge numbers of sales that uh, Apple could bring in, he could go to a price point of $100 for an 11 megabits per second device, where at that time the market price was $300 for just 2 megabits per second. So this was the moment that 802.11, or Mark in the future, took off. It's crossing the chasm, as more said. So, Bomarev uh, files that letter, and the FCC permits white and copper, but it was too late for Bomarev, so they, they dropped off. And uh, just as a matter of uh, uh, luck, because this proceeding was there, and because we had Julius Knapp, uh, going to one of our meetings, and I was at that time the, the regulatory ombudsman, I was his host, and I planned a trip through all the working groups when they had uh, spectrum uh, on their agenda. And he listened, and he was very impressed by the way we worked. By the way, he also was convinced about the usefulness of the uh, uh, he had to give a presentation. He didn't want me to publish the, the documents to 
too early. So uh, when we were at dinner just before he uh, had to give his presentation, this half, half an hour before, I said, okay, is it now time to publish? And he said, yes, do it. And he said, no, you can do it yourself. So I showed him the server where he had to put his presentation on. He did it. And when I introduced it, I showed the group, I think 200 people in the room, where that presentation was. And you could see him, you know, the, the quarter was, was a dime, I don't know what you call it, would fall. He saw at one second everybody was having his presentation on their screen. And all of the uh, things that he learned during the meeting, he went back and changed the situation. What he heard was that because of the requirement of the 75 watts, uh, the Bluetooths and the hoppers were interfering with that uh, signals. And he said, okay, we don't want to have regulations that uh, require you to interfere. So he went back and changed the rules. We were also trying to find the good technology for um, the 2.4 gigahertz for even higher data rates. And one of the proposals was for it at the end, like in the 5 gigahertz. But that would not fit in the rules at that time. So he went back <coughs> and he changed the rules in a other proceeding, and that is the, uh, in 2002, that the FCC permits intelligent hoppers and so called digital transmission systems. Here is the proceeding, and what it says mm -hmm. is. You can use fewer than 75 hobby sequences uh, using intelligent techniques to avoid interference to other transmitters. And systems using digital modulation techniques shall have at least 500 kilohertz bandwidth, may transmit one watt, and have, again, power spectrum density. So no uh, requirement anymore of uh, spreading gain of at least 10. And that opened the way for us to use 4 FPM in the 2.4 gigahertz band in 11G. So that is about the 2.4 gigahertz band. Let's go to the 5 gigahertz spectrum. Uh, we were at the time that in Europe they permitted the 5 gigahertz band. Now, at that time, the um, 95 it was, the uh, mobile satellite service came to the PTPs and said, wait a minute, in 92 on the, uh, the, the World Radio Conference, we, we forgot to uh, ask for a spectrum for the downlink from the satellite. Uh, can we use that? band that you have given to Hyperland. And he said, okay, but can you share that band? Don't you have a problem with that? And they said, no, 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 it's fine. You can share it. <coughs> okay, then they, the, the, the PTTs didn't object. They got that band, but at a primary platform. And as soon as they had it, they came back to the PTTs and said, wait a minute, if there are very many Hyperlands devices in a small area close to the uh, antenna, then you have problems. So the 